the news vendor model maximizing expected profit. Once we gather economic inputs, uh, the price, the cost, and the salvage value for our product, and uh, once we have the demand forecast um, built as a distribution function, for example, normal distribution, we are ready to determine the order quantity that will maximize our expected profit. So the first thing to realize is that we are not guaranteed any profit because demand is uncertain. And whatever quantity we order, we might have some um, uh, leftover if demand uh, is lower than our quantity, or we can have some uh, lost sales if demand is higher than our quantity. Um, and the second thing to realize is that our expected profit, so, so our uh, probabilistically uh, calculated profit, will be lower than some theoretical maximum possible due to the fact that we have a mismatch and that mismatch will be between the supply and the demand. Supply being our quantity that we order and the demand that is uncertain and may not match the supply. So we can define something uh, called a cost of mismatch or mismatch cost. And uh, actually when we try to maximize expected profit, we will be at the same time minimizing the mismatch cost or expected mismatch cost. And now the mismatch cost will be due to two types of costs. When we have a stock out, which means that uh, we, we have the demand exceeded the, the number of uh, the quantity that we ordered, we will experience something called, uh, that we call, we will call an underage cost. An underage cost is a lost opportunity from selling an extra unit. And of course, in this, in our case, this is going to be the same value as the profit from selling a unit. So if we sell a unit, we sell it for price P and uh, we paid for it at the price cost. If we run out of uh, units, if we have a stock out, for each unit that we are short of, we experience a lost opportunity cost uh, equal exactly to the profit from a sold unit. On the other hand, if we have leftover inventory, uh, that means we bought some units for a price C for the cost and we're only receiving salvage value S from from those units. So that means we have we are experiencing a different type of cost. We call it an overage cost. And this is the cost from having uh, uh, too many units, cost per, per each of those units that we have uh, left uh, in the inventory at the end of the season. So in the case of uh, Hammer uh, uh, 3 slash 2 wetsuit of O'Neill's, we have the price $190, the cost is $110 per unit, salvage value is $90. So we can calculate the underage cost or uh, right, the cost of lost opportunity of selling a product is $80, the same as profit from every sold unit. And uh, overage cost, which is the cost of having one unit uh, left in inventory uh, at the end of the season, is $20. Just one comment here is that uh, in fact, overage cost is the real cost that we will experience if we have leftover inventory. What I mean by this is that, uh, um, you know, this will actually, we we'll actually, uh, if we, when we have the leftover inventory, we actually paid $110 and we are going to sell a unit for $90 according to our model. However, the, uh, that's overage, right? But the underage cost, we um, we uh, this is a lost opportunity cost. So this is an actual. This isn't actually a cost that we experience. This is just something that we call a lost opportunity cost because it it decreased our potential profit uh, from from the potential value we could have achieved. We 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 have it lower by in the number of units that we could have sold times this uh, lost opportunity cost or underage cost. To understand how we can determine the quantity that will maximize our expected profit or minimize the mismatch cost, uh, we're going to consider the following logic. So this is an explanation of the optimal quantity formula. Suppose we plan to have Q units. So we fix Q to some value. And the question is now, should we increase the quantity Q? And specifically, we're going to consider, should we increase Q to Q plus one, right? Um, now, uh, if I'm saying 
should I increase it to q plus one? What really I need to consider is, is this unit q plus one worth having, right? On top of the quantity q that we assumed earlier. So the, to see this, uh, this, this unit q plus one can bring us an additional um, profit or gain. And this gain may be due to the fact that we sell this extra unit. And if you recall, the profit from a sold unit is CU, the underage cost, right? So the expected gain from selling an, this unit Q plus one is going to be CU multiplied by the probability of demand being higher than Q. And I want you to see if demand is higher than Q, that means that the demand must be at least Q plus one units. And if the demand is Q plus one or more, then that means we will be selling unit Q plus one. So then we will collect the, um, the, the, the underage uh, cost, which is the profit from the unit, right? We will get the profit. Uh, so we can actually define this as an expected value, right? We know from uh, um, statistics probability that expected value is uh, a potential value times probability plus all other potential values times probabilities. Well, in this case, if we sell the unit, we get the, the profit CU. And if we don't sell it, well, we, do, we get zero gain from, from the, uh, the sale, right? We don't have the, the unit. So the, this is uh, just taking, uh, it's keeping the zero. So now one thing to realize is that probability the demand is great, greater than Q is equal to one minus probability of demand being at most Q, right? And uh, this probability is actually defined by the um, cumulative distribution function um, of our demand, right? So if we have cumulative distribution function uh, of our demand F of Q, this says is exactly equivalent to probability the demand will be less than or equal than this given value Q. Now, on the other hand, we have an expected loss. An expected loss will be due to the fact that we have a leftover inventory. So the, the leftover inventory, if we have it, right, we will have a, an overage cost, which if you recall is cost minus salvage value, right? In, in the case of uh, uh, O'Neill's product, this is $20, right? Um, whereas this was $80, if you recall. Uh, so this $20, we will have this cost if we don't sell unit Q plus one, which is when demand is going to be less than or equal Q. So expected loss is $20 of uh, overage cost times the probability that the demand will be uh, Q or less, in which case we will have this unit Q plus one as leftover. So again, this is the same demand less than or equal Q as we see here, the same probability. So again, we can replace it by the cumulative distribution function F of Q. So one thing to see is how those uh, gain and loss, how those uh, values change as we change Q. And you can see it here in this chart. On the horizontal axis, you have here Q. And on the vertical axis, we show the expected gain or loss from an extra unit. And the, the, the green function, right, is the expected gain. And the uh, yellow or orange function is the expected loss. So uh, when you have a very small value of Q, right, somewhere here, um, the expected gain from a unit is almost $80. Why is that? Well, if the average demand was somewhere around 3,000 something, then when we are at a very small quantity, it's very likely that we will sell an extra unit here. Let's say we're at quantity 300 here. Will we sell unit 301? Very likely uh, we will because the demand on average being 3,000 with some standard deviation, there's a very large probability that uh, it will exceed 300 units. So the expected gain from an extra unit will be close to the underage cost. And in our example, this is $80. So it is actually, you know, a little bit less than 80 because this probability is not 100%. It's, it's very close to one, but uh, right. So that, that, that means CU times this probability, the demand will be higher than Q is, is, is close to 80 because this probability is close to one. Now, about the expected loss that you see here, right? It takes probability the demand will be less than or equal 300. So this is a very small probability, right? And so the expected loss from an extra unit is actually very close to zero because it's 20 times a very tiny probability, right? 
So in this case, it's clear that expected gain outweighs expected loss. Therefore, it makes sense to increase the quantity, right? Move it somewhere here to the right. Uh, what about um, when Q increases, when Q becomes larger, right? When Q becomes larger, you see the expected gain will be dropping, expected loss will be increasing. Still, expected gain here is higher than expected loss. At some point, we will reach a value which is indicated by this red line, right? And at this red line, right, we're at the point where the expected gain and expected uh, loss, they cross each other. So that means they have the same value, right? Expected gain is equal to expected loss. And in this case, when you, if you were to think about a unit Q plus 1, increasing this by 1, then you will realize that it doesn't make any, any sense anymore because uh, right at this point, when you're at this red point, um, in, in getting an extra unit will bring us more expected loss than expected gain. In this case, the relationship reverses. There is the expected loss outweighs the expected gain. And so that means... If increasing Q by 1 is no longer profitable. So the, the, the conclusion from all this uh, explanation is that we need to find the quantity at which expected gain and expected loss are equal. Those two values, expected gain and expected loss, must be equal at quantity Q, and that will be our optimal quantity. So we can solve this. We can say to maximize expected profit, find Q such that expected gain is equal to expected loss. Or with the function that we wrote, right, it's uh, under each cost multiplied by 1 minus probability demand is Q or less equals over each cost times probability uh, demand is Q or less. And so we can solve this, right, so it's just multiplying the CU times these two values will give us this. Uh, right, and the right hand side is still the same. And what I want you to see is that f of q is here and f of q is here. So we can bring those to one side, let's say to the right side, and then you have cu, and we have to divide it by the sum of cu and co. So this is uh, one way to put the solution, right? The uh, probability that demand is q or less should be equal to this value, right? So we can, of course, inverse the. Uh, cumulative distribution function f so we can obtain this format this formula in this uh, formula cu over cu plus co is actually called a critical ratio and basically the the solution says that we should find q such that probability that demand is q or less or here right is equal to the critical ratio critical ratio cu over cu plus co so what would the solution look like for O'Neill's Hammer 3-2 wetsuit? Well, recall that we uh, determined the cumulative distribution function. Um, um, we, we, we set it uh, based on the normal distribution. We assume the demand distribution for this uh, product will be normal. And we found out the mean and standard deviation uh, from the forecast that we obtained from marketing and from the uh, forecasting history uh, and quality of forecast that we have, the, the data that we have about quality of forecasts uh, in the past uh, that the marketing did. So, uh, and the, of course, we, we had uh, underage and overage costs uh, calculated underage $80, overage $20. So we can now calculate the critical ratio Take the $80 and divide by the sum of costs, which will be 100. So the critical ratio happens to be exactly 0 0.8. And now we have to set Q to the quantity that is, um, right, that is uh, going to give us probability of satisfying all the demand with 80% probability, right? Um, and so um, probability of satisfying all the demand will be 80%, and that quantity is going to be 4,186. In Excel, we can calculate this using the norm in function, giving the critical ratio as the first parameter or the probability that uh, of satisfying all the demand um, uh, given as the first parameter, and the second and the third are mu and sigma. Right? So graphically, it looks like this. Right? This is my cumulative distribution function for my demand forecast. 
and notice uh, that it has a mean of 3192 and the standard deviation is basically saying uh, how how wide this distribution is right the sigma is is deciding on the on how how uh, uh, much spread there could be around this mean right and what we're doing by this norm in function is we're basically saying for probability 0 0.8 Right, this 0 0.8 value, find me the quantity such that demand will be this or less with probability 80%. So that's that quantity is somewhere around this point, and accurately it is 4,186. Strictly speaking, it will be fractional, but we can round it, uh, and the preferable, uh, preferable rounding is always uh, up because it actually satisfies the probability uh, or, 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 or achieves a little bit higher probability. So the question that still remains is why is this Q value so much higher than the expected demand? Why is it higher than 3,192? Or notice it is even higher, uh, it is, it's also much higher than what the marketing forecast was, 3,200. Why are we ordering so much more? Well, first reason is that there is a lot of uncertainty. The sigma right, the, indicates that we have uncertain demand. The higher the sigma, the the, the larger this value uh, in our example with uh, critical ratio 0 0.8 would be, right? Uh, but also the more important reason is it's because the underage cost outweighs the overage cost, right? Our underage cost is $80, whereas our, our overage cost is only $20. So what it tells us is we're not afraid to have leftover inventory because it will be just $20 per unit. However, we are really afraid of having lost sales because that means $80, four times more cost, oppor lost opportunity cost per unit of uh, lost sales. So that's why we actually go over the quantity, the, the expected demand. And in fact, if you assume, if you had critical ratio 0 0.5, this quantity would be exactly equal to the mean. If you had critical ratio below 0 0.5, for example, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.1, then we would choose a, a quantity that is much lower than the uh, mean demand. Or how much lower also would depend on the sigma, on the standard deviation. So we have completed now the calculation of the quantity that will maximize our expected profit or minimize the mismatch cost.